The normal heart delivers approximately 100,000 cardiac cycles per day at 70 beats per minute. With a normal ejection fraction of 55 to 70 percent, that's five to six quarts of blood per minute to the body. In normal sinus rhythm, NSR, the atrial and ventricular chambers are electrically timed to contract and relax in synchrony to optimize the heart's cardiac output. A voltage map can illustrate how electrical conduction is propagated throughout the myocardial tissues to elicit myocardial depolarization and repolarization. Ventricular fibrillation, VF, is a common shockable rhythm in sudden cardiac arrest. The normal electrical activation sequence is consumed by fast, chaotic patterns of depolarization and repolarization throughout the ventricular tissue. Cardiac output quickly drops to zero. VF can result from cardiac conditions such as acute myocardial infarction, previous myocardial infarctions, structural heart disease, severe electrolyte imbalance, or rare genetic conditions like Brugada syndrome or long QT syndrome. A voltage map shows the chaotic electrical patterns resulting from VF. Without intervention, VF and the loss of cardiac output will continue and quickly drain the myocardial tissue of its metabolic capabilities and lead to ischemic tissue death. Delivery of an electrical shock, which is the application of a sufficient electrical field over time, can terminate VF. When successful, a defibrillation shock results in termination of VF. Depending on the health of the heart, an organized perfusing rhythm, pulseless electrical activity, or asystole can result. Defibrillation pads are placed on the chest, keeping the heart in between them. This can be done in two configurations anterior-posterior, or anterior-lateral. Modern defibrillation waveforms are delivered in two electrical phases, or polarities. Voltage is applied to the body for a specific time, driving current in one direction during phase one, then instantaneously reversed in phase two. The resulting electrical field is delivered in less than the blink of an eye and affects the entire torso. The total electrical output of a defibrillation shock is measured as energy in joules. Here, the defibrillation waveform is graphed with current and duration. Prior to the shock, the electric field is uniform, as shown by the green torso. As the shock begins, it quickly reaches peak current and peak voltage, shown here with the positive voltage in red and the negative voltage in blue, and the flow of current in yellow. As phase one continues, the voltage and the resulting current decreases over time. At the end of phase one, the defibrillator stops applying voltage, which shuts off the current to return to a neutral state. At the start of phase two, voltage and current are quickly applied in the opposite direction. As phase two continues, the voltage and the resulting current decreases over time. At the end of phase two, the defibrillator shuts off the current, causing a return to neutral. The shock is now complete. Research shows 5 to 11% of patients in VF are difficult to defibrillate, needing multiple shocks to terminate VF. Clinicians can optimize defibrillation in two ways. One, escalate shock energy level. Two, use optimal pad placement. Higher defibrillation energy, or shock dose, is associated with higher defibrillation efficacy. Shock energy can be increased by lengthening the duration, or increasing the amplitude of current and voltage, or increasing both duration and amplitude. Research also reports that small variations in pad placement can impact defibrillation success rate. Varying the pad placement, even by small amounts, changes the distribution of the voltage and current flow applied to the torso. Predicting the optimal pad placement can be difficult. 
The same data also reports that lower defibrillation efficacy from pad placement variations were overcome with higher biphasic energy. Defibrillation is a complex process that combines voltage, current, and duration. A defibrillation shock's energy in joules combines these key electrical characteristics. 5 to 11 percent of patients are difficult to defibrillate. Higher defibrillation energy is associated with higher defibrillation efficacy. Suboptimal pad placement can also impact defibrillation efficacy. Better understanding of how defibrillation works can help clinicians maximize shock efficacy.